forward to TV.com. I think you can see I have a t-shirt in front of me. And I'll let uh, Diane talk about it. Uh, she's really a really incredible Doberman lover. For How many years have you loved Dobermans, Diane? Oh my, maybe uh, 40 years. 40 years? Wow, what a great history then, huh? But it sounded like Dieter was your baby. Well, he was he was the one that you had to almost train every day because he was very uh, a dominant. He was very alpha, and uh, but he was very sweet. He had one one thing that made him trainable, and that was he had a soft side. He did have a soft side. He had a soft side, and so I trained him using that, and uh, so he was. Really, he was just a big teddy bear, but everybody else thought he was fierce, yeah. and he let them think so. Was he friendly to other people, though? He was he what? Friendly? Uh, or standoffish kind of? Well, he was aloof. Yeah. Uh, but if he liked somebody, he would. What he would? He was way too uh, macho to show mm. a, uh, that he wanted to be, be petted. So he would just lean on you when mm. he when he wanted. Too macho. <laughs> yeah. The dogs even like the male well, dog. He huh? was very macho, very. Mm. I showed him in a, I used to take him to the fair because he was so uh, easy to watch, he was fun to watch. You can imagine. With such energy and such enthusiasm and such power. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards the dogs that were friendly were allowed to mix with the people and he was friendly so he mixed with the people. Mm -hmm. But on the way there I had to take a shuttle bus. Oh. So I get on the bus with the dog. I can imagine. And uh, it's all filled except for right behind the bus driver. Uh -huh. So I get on, and when I got on with him, everybody, it was just dead silence. So I sat down, and he sits next to me, and he's sitting facing the people. <laughs> and so there's this dead silence, and uh, so I just said, he's friendly. And from the back of the bus, I heard, we, hope, we certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but he never, never looked away. He mm. never showed any friendship. He was a great protector. Oh, very, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So when did he pass? He passed uh, uh, about two days before his 11th birthday uh, in 1994. Oh, so it's been a while then. Yeah. Yeah, that was probably traumatic to you. Oh, it was very, very traumatic. I can imagine. A lot of pet lovers, you know, they And I got more them. cards from his death than I did from when my husband died. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I got <laughs> cards from everybody. From everybody? So I just, sorry. That was amazing because I taught, you know, I taught and I yeah. showed and I judged. And uh, so I knew practically everybody in the dog field in St. Paul, mm. Minneapolis. Yeah. So what are some of the unusual things Dieter did? Well, one time I was, uh, I had just finished showing my dogs when my dog and I were outside watching them and there was this, this boy, maybe he was, 13, a little, little overweight, mm -hmm. and he was alone, and and my dog suddenly got up, and when he did this, I usually went with him, mm -hmm. and he walked over to the boy, mm -hmm. and sat down next to him, like he was protecting him, yeah. and the boy was scared, you yeah. could see, and I said, you know, you're a very special person, this mm -hmm. dog does not do this to everybody, wow. he likes you. So the mother came over and said, is he safe? And I said, your boy is safe, <laughs> very safe. safe. Very safe uh -huh. And uh, so then I said, I have to go to the restroom when you're not allowed. And dog said, would you watch him while I'm gone? And the kid said, yes. And I came out and he had his arms around Dieter. And Dieter was just sitting there taking it all in. Oh, he loved it. And, oh, yeah. And afterwards, when I was getting ready to go home, the mother came up and she says, you do not know what that meant for my son. Because he's he's been bullied mm -hmm. and he has low self-esteem, but she said his his self-esteem went way up mm -hmm. from that experience. Now, okay. how did how, how did my dog know that this boy he needed this? He needed that, but yeah. He, but he needed it, and it, he gave it to him. We well, you know that you've you've seen TVs on on news and about different pets that can sense somebody when they're dying yes. and they go comfort yes. them and yes. stay with them until they pass. So they they. They really have the, they're a lot, have more intuition than we give them credit for. Well, I have a black men pen who is now in her 16th year. Wow. And when my second husband died, I took her into hospice. Mm -hmm. I had to take her home. She was too upset. Really? Oh, yeah. She was just panting heavily and just extremely upset. And my husband said, take her home. She can't. She can't handle it. Because she knew he was dying. Oh, man. I get that. And she, knew it, and she couldn't handle it. You still have her? Yeah. What's her name? Her name is Echo. Because she was raised by my daughter. <laughs> by my other Doberman, Polly, oh. and 
so she echoed everything my, my uh, other Doberman did. So I called her Diane Desert Echo. <laughs> Was all well, your dogs had papers? Yes, oh yes. Oh, so you breed, you breed them, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't breed them, I no. show them in, in AKC obedience. Oh. And at that time you had to have a purebred in order to show. Now oh, right. you can show dogs that aren't purebreds. But it's amazing what they've done for dogs these days. Uh, I mean, yeah. in a breed, I don't know if that's good or not, but they make the, they create all kinds of different looking animals today. Yes, well, you have to be really careful because then the people want dogs that are different. So then they'll do a, ba a backyard breeding maybe of two different breeds and come up with what they think is really mm. different, but really the dog has got, got problems because they haven't checked to see what the genetic problems were between the two dogs. Yeah. Breeding is a difficult thing to do if you're going to do it right. Oh, I can imagine. Before I let you go, Diane, do you want to say anything else? Try to say anything to anybody? Or you have any family well, someplace else? Well, if, if there's anybody out there that remembers me from when I taught in uh, Minneapolis, Edina, and Eden Prairie, I'm in, uh, in, in Sun City, Arizona. Hmm. I'm still Diane Needham, even though I was married the second time, I didn't take his name. Oh, okay. Do you have a website or anything or email address? I have an e email address. You want to give it out? Yeah, it's Diane Needham 30 at gmail.com. Okay, thanks a lot.